Hello and greetings to all the members of the Unplugged family, friends of Julia Jacks Consulting, which we like to call JJC. To our family, our friends, and the friends of my guests and their family as well. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Without you, there really would be no us. So we are really grateful that you are part of us. Thank you very much. So what do we do through Unplugged? Hmm. We identify up and coming brand stars and in the MSME sector, especially those in the South South and the Southeast geopolitical sectors. Why those sectors? Because we feel that we need to actually make a lot of noise and celebrate people who are doing great things outside the um, commercial, the usual commercial centers. And of course, these are the people who provide, who are going to form the bedrock of um, the private sector, which is very, very important to have. It's very important to have a vibrant private sector to, um, to show up the economy. So what we do through Unplugged is that we amplify the voices, we showcase what they do to the rest of the nation and hopefully to the rest of the world. We've been getting a lot of um, uh, feedback from the rest of the world as well. So that is what we're doing in Unplugged. And this month, our theme is from Port Harcourt with love. Why Port Harcourt? Okay, I'll tell you why. This month, May, actually I think on 27th of May, River State turns 55. River State is officially middle age this, this month, you know, officially middle age. And Port Harcourt is the commercial center, is the capital. Of, of River State, and that's where I live. That's my adopted city. And it's been my adopted city for almost 15 years. So I need to celebrate where I live and also the place that has nurtured me and my family. So I'm a happy transplant, as is my guest for today. My guest today is also known as Potakot Moms, Beatrice Adeshida. So join me all to welcome Beatrice. Hi, Beatrice. Hi. Good morning, Ma. It's a pleasure to be on your guest on your show this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, let me say hi to my my guests, um, hi, Asin, hi, Alera. Hey, sis, I haven't seen you in a long time. Hi, hi, and hi, Afia. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we're going to go on Instagram as well. So um, our friends on IG can also join us. Okay, I always forget what to do, I tell you. <laughs> Okay, so Beatrice, could you could you ask to join? I think it's easier that way. Ah. Okay, I've accepted. I think it's going to. Hi, Oni, your first guest on on IG. Hey, great to see you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Ah, Sister Lero, you've been watching us on YouTube. Oh, okay. Okay. Wait, I've missed you. I've missed your comments. You know. Hi, Lamora Fabrics and Styles. Hi. Thank you for joining. And um, we will start off by asking, okay, I'm a transplant and I know how it could be. And I was transplanted from Lagos to Port Harcourt because of marriage. Was that the same thing that transplanted you? Um, yes, by marriage, yes. Okay, okay, okay. And I hope Potakos has been good to you. Yes, it has. It has been good to me. It's been a pleasure being here. Um, it's, it's a lovely city. It's a beautiful city. The, 
the people are kind, uh, welcoming. Um, if I wasn't experiencing that, I don't think I would have set up this page. So it's been it's been a great experience, really. So what was it for me? There was a lot of. Um, should, should I give you time to sort that out? Because um, I mean, you know, we are unplugged. Everything goes. You know, yeah. we are not so yeah. slick and everything. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. We can give you time to to sort yourself okay. to sort it out. Okay. Yeah, your your head is kind of cut off. Yeah. Okay, now we can see your shoulders. <laughs> I think you just have a bit too much headroom. <laughs> but don't worry, I tell you, the very first unplugged we did, I was halfway, I was kind of sideways throughout. Was it throughout or halfway through? Halfway through until somebody pointed it out to me like, you're sideways. I'm like, really? What do I do? <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Yes. So what were, what were the adjustments that you had to do, you had to make? Did you have to make any adjustments? I mean, my, my colleague used to call them environmental shocks, you know? <laughs> Did you experience any environmental shocks when you, when you moved to, to Port Harcourt? Um, yeah, a little bit. But, you know, um, Port Harcourt is still a big part of Nigeria. And um, I only moved from the southwest to uh, the other side of South South. So um, the only thing you could say was maybe the language. Um, but then Pigeon and um, Pigeon and English is widely spoken. So um, you could relate with people and um, you know just more Pigeon, um, which every Nigerian should be able to speak anyway. You know, so um, it is. It was. It was. It was easy actually. But the only thing was you know I couldn't find my way around. Um, knowing where to go and being an adventurous person, even though I'm a bit of an introvert as well. Um, I like to know, to explore the city that I'm in. I like to know where the food is. I like to know where they sell this and that. So basically it's been, um, it's been, it's not, it's not really that, it's not bad. It's never been bad. It's, it's only just knowing where to go and what to do when it comes to some certain, uh, certain circumstances, um, healthcare, you know, to trust, you know, maybe you've been used to a particular place and then, you know, when it comes to Nigeria, you have to be very careful when it comes to Absolutely. your health, that you're going to the right place, <laughs> you know. So all of that were worries, but um, I didn't really find a lot of um, issues, really. And then, you know, there's this way, because the way I look, you know, so people, you, you know, people think, oh, I'm from, you know, I, I'm from... Uh, yeah. The north. So people think, oh, yeah. Yeah, well, maybe, <laughs> yeah. So sometimes people think I'm even southeast. You know, all of the time I get, oh, oh, I thought you were this and all of that. But I, I never, it never comes to play really because I interact um, as a Nigerian and I'm a tribalized Nigerian. I will say that. So anywhere I go, I would want to embrace the culture. I find myself. I would like to understand the people. So I think I really wanted to understand the environment. I wanted to know the people um, that live here. So I didn't have much issues, more like I was open to learn. Yeah. OK. OK. Um, as you're speaking, I'm just um, comparing your experience with mine. I, I moved here in 2007. And um, of course, I moved at an age that was much older. I was in my 40s in, in the in the lower part of my 40s when I moved here, you know. And um, I think for me, the first shock was the cost of food. I was I was dazed and amazed, you know, like, it's so expensive. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you, know? Yeah. you know, I mean, yes. I, I wasn't I living that. on exactly <laughs> cheap side of, of Lagos, but, but we still could go and buy things. And it wasn't that expensive. You know, so it was. Um, yes. That was that was my well, that was my major shock, and I think also being of a different generation. I don't even know what they call my generation. <laughs> you know, I don't know if we're baby boomers. Maybe that's what we are. 
being of a different generation, mm. it, it didn't um, it didn't occur to me that I was used to having a circle of people that nurtured me, you know, and um, I guess I wasn't so open to. I was open to the marriage. I was open to moving because of marriage, but the those things that nurture you, which could be your friends, mm. um, your church, your hospital doctors you know finding those things how, how did you how did you get about doing those things those things that help you you know find your way navigate your way in a new place because we all have to leave our comfort zone either physically or yeah. mentally or emotionally we all have to so how did you navigate your way um i'll say that um it was not my first experience locating um i've lived abroad and i was much younger and um luckily i had family only other the siblings but over there but um it was it was more of a different experience so i think that also prepared my mind because there you had you know people were all style not they were style to me but i mean um there was racism and all of that so i think that um informed me of um how to um, how to adapt wherever I find myself because you still have to live your life. So basically, I think um, I'm leaving friends. It was it was it was leaving friends, family for marriage. So um, it's more, more like moving permanently, really. So um, it was a bit of because um, I find myself still traveling here and there. I didn't settle immediately. I was always any small thing, anything that you know, any opportunity to. <laughs> Be out of the city <laughs> i will find myself out <laughs> you know so that i could go and um you know some things you don't see we used to seeing around maybe um recreation centers and all of that it was not just all about that but um it was very different and then you realize that um here is more of a um, business is more business based um, um small businesses you know so you have more people businesses set up on like you know where I've been, where you know you have companies, you have you have so many things, and it's a growing city, really. It's a beautiful growing city, it but is. you know what the focus is on, um, you know, and um, the sector that is really booming. So um, for me, it was it was um, more about um, like you mentioned, you know, you talked about the um, cost of food and all of that, and then you know I had to find a way about it. I, I had to find a way around it. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why I, st I started this page. I wanted to know women farmers. I wanted to know, you know, people, things that how I could get things cheaper, how I could get best quality, you know. So living family was, and we've always, we, but we, I grew up with the mindset, and maybe that's where our parents raised us, that um, we can always, wherever we find ourselves, we should be able to adapt. You know, so we for, for a long time we were in school and all of that. I went to boarding school, so I'm already used to being. You know, I can I can be comfortable with myself. That's what that's what that's the word. So um, I can keep in touch with loved ones, um, call. You know, we're in touch and all of that. But I could um, I could manage or thrive. That's what I would say. I would say manage because if you manage after a while, you you would you know you would get to the tipping point. You know. So, Basically, I could learn to thrive wherever I find myself. Yeah, so that's that's what um, it wasn't easy. But another thing is that um, my siblings, family, people I know, are married, and most of them also live in different parts of the country of the world. So most times we even talk is on WhatsApp. So we are not we don't see face to face, except maybe church community people that you are used to. You've been going to you know places where they know you on a regular basis and you know so but basically i think i was able to uh to adapt and um, um and yeah that's that's what i would say <laughs> i'm going to share a comment by my big sis alero she says that's a beautiful attitude and i agree you know i agree you know that's ability to adapt that ability to take everywhere as um, as home i think it's something that is really um, it's a gift 
it's really a gift, you know. You know so um, going through your page, Portacot Moms, guys, you can follow Beatrice on Portacot Moms. She has an incredible page. She really has an incredible page. It's a very okay. I'll talk about what how I see her page a little bit uh, later, but it's obvious that you have a very closely knit community on Portacot Moms. Because I see how people interact, you know, ask questions. I haven't read every single post, but I've read quite a few. You know, why did you start it? I have, I have a three, actually a three in one question. So why did you start it? Why are you still at it? And what do you plan to do with it? Okay. Um, I think I started the... Um water cup moms when um, I think it was already in the pipeline before I moved permanently here because I actually asked myself that you know how am I going to connect how am I going to know people um, I can't just say I will be relating with my husband or you know children or you know I needed to form um, I needed to meet people especially women and you know it's always when women come together you always find a solution so I, I always thought about that and I would not feel to to um, acknowledge Lagos moms um, in this because um, while I was in Lagos, I, I used to run um, um, summer camps for kids, summer and all of that. And I used to, you know, um, engage on a page and I even placed some adverts on that page. So I realized that women and moms in Lagos could come together and um, share, um, share find out you know what people are doing share their their struggles as a mom um you know like a support system really and also market their businesses so i saw that and i felt okay this is if i move to this place i don't know anyone i can't start knocking from door to door so if i create this page is a way to actually and i saw that i tried to search on the internet and i didn't see any page existing that i could join that you know I could so I could just be part of that community and learn and you know quickly um, adapt and you know know someone to introduce me to one place or the other. So I I had that in the pipeline. So when I moved here and I saw that you know I didn't know places, I was you know mostly at home, I started the page, you know, Instagram, you know, I was waiting, I was, then I was trying to wait for the everything to be right, but I realized that you know. I was really missing out on a great a great deal. So I just started whatever I had. You know, I have internet, I have a phone, so why not? You know, so I just created the pages, um, the Facebook, Twitter, you know, I just created all of those pages. And you know, honestly, I didn't even know what we will be doing <laughs> on those pages, but I knew that we will connect and we will find a way. We will know what we'll be doing later, but let's just start, you know. So I started and then I tried to um, start tagging, asking people to tag people in um, women in events, women in this. So, you know, and then I tried to create a business list whereby people, women could um, fill a Google form and then would create a website and put businesses there so that if you're looking for to support a woman or you want to buy from a woman in Portacot, a mom in Portacot, you could do, you know, you could easily reach them. So we created a business list and then um, we start, you know, start um, posting, um, target this, uh, this person in this, in that, and all of that. Through that, I started knowing, okay, this person does this. Up till now, I there are lots of, you know, because I'm still a kind of uh, reserved person. I, I, I patronize these businesses that they don't even know I do, you know, because I don't come out as PH moms when I do. But through it, I, I have been able to um, um, connect and know where this is. And other women, too, were also able to know where to get this, where to get that. And it was another way of women supporting women, you know. And I found out that unconsciously or maybe somehow I had imbibed this. It was a long time coming. I probably didn't know. Because um, when I worked um, with Corona schools, um, um, it has a history of Corona Women's Society, whereby expatriates of, um, of um, wives of expatriates that worked in Nigeria pre-independence, 
were, were um, um, they came to Nigeria, but there was a Koroma Women's Society worldwide that, that is set up in every country of the Commonwealth, which um, when they come in there, they are able to um, they let them form a society whereby they don't feel lonely because they are coming from another city. They are coming from a different culture. So there will be culture, culture shock and all of that. So they, they created a society that they have regional in different countries whereby they will be able to connect with other expatriate women. So when I, I, because I was working on the branding with my um, boss then, and then I read the history and I found out that, oh, wow, this is great. Um, Corona's Women's Society. So I think that's why I said unconsciously, I, if I look back, I realized that um, they formed a school, because if you read about the school, 1955, when the school was formed, um, it was these women that came together and said, we want a, child, a school for our children, a school that, of standard. So they came together and um, you look at all of um, the things, um, the teachers were volunteers, the building was donated, everything was, you know, it was a community work. The school is one of the biggest schools in Nigeria right now, because when they were even leaving, they set up a trust council whereby the school will continue. It has grown to more than eight schools. So when I look at it, that that was founded on women. And I also look at the fact that um, my mom, um, I, I didn't know it, but maybe until she passed, I realized that my mom was big on women. You know, she always prayed for pregnant women. She always, you know, she was anywhere she goes to, she, she always draws crowd, you know. So she was about women empowerment. She would never want to see someone suffer or, you know. So I found out that somehow I unconsciously invite this because when I sometimes I ask myself, so why did I even start this? You know, I'm not really a outgoing person like that, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. But I realized that I realized the power of women. And even while I was um, um, working in um, Corona, then the way the women embraced me, there's a saying um, of I credited to Isaac Newton that says that um, if I've seen further, is because I have stood on the, on, the, on, the, on the shoulders of giants. I would say that I've stood on the shoulders of women because um, while I worked there, um, the, the then um, executive director, who is now the commissioner of education in Lagos, took me as her own, you know, she, anytime she would call me, my what are you doing, come here. You know, she was more like a mentoring relationship, you know, and all the other women, you know, they were always calling me, what was I doing? And, you know, it made me aspire and um, saw that, you know, there are times that we have issues where women are not supporting women and women pull each other, that kind of pull down syndrome. But I have seen it, um, women support women. I've seen women rise through other women. So I see that there is power in when women come together. Um, so I will say that that's largely um, um, laid the foundation of what I did or what I'm doing now. So I've, I've seen women thrive on women, like women supporting women. So um, that's why I started the page and to connect, to know where the, um, women are, you know, what they are doing. And um, what was the second question? It's a three question award. Um, <laughs> why, um, second question is, um, why are you still at it? But I think you've answered that, really. So the third question is, what do you plan to do with it? Okay, right. Um, from the onset, I have never wanted this page to be about me, and that's why you you have to see me on lies or on anything. You know, like I do. I know the the times that we did um, a few programs um, and featured on radio, classic FM, and all of that. But um, I've never wanted it to be about me because um, I moved to the city. I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I wanted to create a society for women, a community for women. We've not, I haven't gotten to the root of that, to be honest with you, because um, um, I took time, I've been taking time to understand the environment while we've been doing things um, in between. Um, a few things also happened that, um, you know, made me take a break from the page and um, so I, I I needed to to step back, you know. And people, you know, sometimes I got messages from people saying, you know, what what's happening? You're not doing this again, and all of that. But you know, you can't explain to everybody. There are times you really need to pull away, you know. And 
and I, I, I needed to do that. And it was a struggle because I felt, okay, maybe we've done all that we need to do on this page. But I, every time I find that there is a, there's a gap that we, we are filling. Um, I, I, because we are done, when I came in, I saw that, okay, a lot of women were not doing anything. Some people were doing businesses and then the digital age has taken over whereby you could sell from your own, you could do all of that. So when I was doing all of this, tag, tag a mom in the same tag, and then people were calling and sending messages, where can I um, get hospital to go for maternity? You know, people were asking and all of this, tag a person and all of that. When we were doing all of that, I found out that there were lots of people that wanted to come out, were trying to do businesses, work from home. Maybe they couldn't, maybe they also are in protocol because of their husband or, you know, it could just be, a voluntary or this is where they've always been because we have a large number of that as well people that this is their city this is you know where they've always been and this is where they are so we found out that um that um a lot of women wanted to do business wanted to make money because at the end of the day um there is there is this um there is the satisfaction you get from labor you know, even if you can no longer do nine to five, you find that a lot of people, maybe they've been in nine to five before, but you know, maybe through this job loss and all of that, they lost their job, but they still want to earn something. There is power in earning, you know, you can't just rely on your husband or rely on, you know, family, you know, you need, you know, so I could see that hunger and test. So then I, I then I sampled it out and we tried to do this um, fair, women fair. And honestly, people that signed up, we're more than 40. In fact, we had to start because for me, I was like, I was just testing, you know, you know <laughs> can I handle this? You know, it's not, <laughs> you know, I was just saying that, okay, people need the service. And then, you know, you had so many people, you know, turning up saying, you know, even when we said we are closed, one lady said, no, she, she cannot close or you put money on it, I will come. So I was just like, okay, right. <laughs> I, I well, my husband said, "Are you sure you can? You really want to do this?" I'm like, "Well, give it a try. We, we, we must try something, and then you know, whatever comes of it, we will, um, we will learn, and then for future, you know, and all of that." So, but I saw that there has never been any um, kind of fair for women like that, and then you know, of course, we 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 we, we didn't put a lot of factors in place, and we didn't we didn't put a, a lot of factors in consideration, even range that day heavily you know, and all of that, and, you know, mm. now where people will check whether, whether forecast, you do all of that before you, you do, so that you, I will use a, 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 a covered center, because I would never do such a game without using an in, in, indoor, indoor, you know, because it rains in Port Harcourt, <laughs> you know, so, um, all the time. so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, so, um, so, well, basically, um, 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 why, so why we did that and you know a lot of other things I, I also always wanted to celebrate women um, because of um, where what I've seen women do and you know going through a lot of pages I could see people doing things and hiding and you know, and they were not necessarily um, born for tackle born but they are for based so I saw a lot of women doing stuff and I felt we could celebrate it we should we, it can it can inspire other women um that are still saying what will i do what can i do with myself you know and all of that and when they read stories of people doing amazing stuff they would um come out of their shells so basically um that was why we we're doing what we're doing and so um when i took the break and then i was off and on you know i was asking myself do we really want to continue and then i realized that okay if we're going to continue it has to be a new strategy we have to change we're not, I wasn't out there to compete. Um, I thought about community over competition, and there are lots of oh, women doing that. great things, yeah. honestly. You know, there are lots of women doing great things. There's women in Port Harcourt. I must acknowledge what she's doing. You know, she's doing great, 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 you know. And, um, you know, quite a number of them, Berenka's daughter, you know, based in Port Harcourt. There are many vendors here. There are quite a number. I see their pages. I see what they do. They're doing very well, you know. So you find out that. They have, they have taken these things to the next level and they are connecting with women and they are, you know, this goal, because I said that, I realized that above all, um, because I thought of initially that, okay, we should share more of um, um, 
things about maternity, postpartum air loss, postpartum depression. You know, I was thinking of you know sharing things about mom, motherhood. You know, um, um, things that affect women and moms generally. You know, catering for children, working. You know, and all of that. But I realized that the deepest yearning of these women, um, especially those that are not working um, for um, an organization, was to get their market out there, to get their businesses out there. And for me, um, it was, I needed a balance. You know, we we're doing that, but I, 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 I put myself a bit like, no, I, I wanted to do that, but I, I, I wanted to balance my, maybe my person, I felt that, okay, we could balance it because it's not everybody that needs that. So, and then right now you have people covering that niche as well. But I, I felt that we could, we could um, be more like I mentioned what I, cover, I talked about when I talked about the Corona Women's Society was that um, a community where you have an issue, you have, you know, um, something that is disturbing, bothering you, or, you know, or you just don't know what to do, that we could create that support system for moms and um, in Port Harcourt and, you know, beyond, because sometimes you find people that are not even based there following us. You know, and you know, sending messages sometimes even summer. Where can I take my kids from summer? So I found out that even while I took the break, I, I there were more than 40 or 50 messages. I sometimes I read them, I didn't respond because uh, there's some I responded to, but I felt okay, if I we just come back now again, and I wasn't ready mentally, <laughs> you know, I needed to be sure that I was ready to. to this <laughs> you know so you know had people like oh i wanted to please push my 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 page push this and all of that and then the time i said okay i did some but some i said no we're not taking hats you know i'm not taking hats I, if i i it will just be for monetary you know gain but you may not even get the because we've not been engaging on the page so you may not even get um what you want from from it so um so so um we we um, um we're still in line with what we intended to do or what i intended to do with the page but I, when i i don't like to use i because i i want to work with more women on this um so we're still well, you in know, line that, that comes through that comes through that sense of community comes through because i like to look at pages a lot and um i think okay i think it helps for me having a teenage daughter that um I, I get to see more of social media than I normally would for someone in my age demographic. And um, I, I can tell the brands, I can, I can sense, because I'm also a branding person, I can I can read, read the signs and see, yours is more of community. Actually, you know, I had lost the link, not lost the link, I hadn't set my notifications. Now this is where coming from, someone has to tell me my generation, because. Is it are we the baby boomers? I'm not sure. I see my age mates on this. My sister is here. Jerry, are we baby boomers? I'm not sure. You know, but then that's you know tagging people, setting notifications, ringing that bell. I honestly didn't know. So there was somebody. There is somebody in your community, a doctor, who made a post, and um, I think you were tagged. And I said, Oh, there she is. Let me go look for her. And I looked for you, I followed her trail, looked for you, and then set the notification so I could I could follow you, you know. But I want to read something on Instagram. Hi, all our friends on Instagram. Thank you for joining. Um, this generation says to you, your genuine interest to help other women rise is shining through. We need more women to think like you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Portacot in Pictures, for joining. Thank you. I don't know if it's DIY Ma, or if I mispronounce it, forgive me, but thank you all for joining. Thank you. I, I know you're part of her community, and I hope you will stay. You know, we are, we are, we are a good place to hang out. We are a good place to hang out as well. So, yeah. yes, the, the, the thing I... I um, I figured about you is that the community is really important. And that's why you've been giving us serious nuggets back to back, you know, community over competition, that is very important. And that, um, I think it takes all sorts. We need everybody in the ecosystem. We need the competitive people 
because they also show us that it can be done that way. We also need the people who are like, I'm easy, you know, just do you and, and go along. So I just want to thank you for being yourself. It's a very difficult thing. You know, I, I also coach, and when people say, stay on your lane, is it stay on your lane? Is it stay on your lane? People say, you see, yeah, stay on your lane. It's, it's, it's a very difficult yeah. thing to do because when you get on Instagram and you see somebody with hundred and something followers and you have 2000 followers and you see someone there with a hundred and something thousand followers, you're like, okay, which lane am I on really? Am I on the right lane? You know? So for you to maintain your focus, it's so, so, so important, but there's some things that I'd like to, to, to reiterate and have you perhaps um, speak about because the people of different generations here you said when women i'm going to just show them one on one one by one they'll, they'll come up on the screen when women come together you always find solutions i think that's totally brilliant and that debunks the idea that um, women don't support women i always ask people do all men support all men every each other and the answer is no so you know <laughs> that's that's the truth you know and then this you know it might be easier what would you say to somebody who's much older who wants to start after several attempts and you know sometimes when you're older this this thing that you said and you said it and i understand why you said it you know it might be hard have you found people in your community that find it difficult to just to just start? I think um, starting is always um, is, looks like the most difficult part, but it's actually the easiest. Um, I think um, people, especially like. Let's say, let, let's say women that want to start businesses and all of that. Um, like you said, you mentioned something that is really, really key and um, that um, may discourage people from starting. Actually, let's even say an online vendor, because you see that there is um, people feel that there is um, you're more valid by the numbers you, that follow you. So when someone wants to start today, starting with zero followers, and then you, you know, and then you want to sell you want to market and then you know there is this feeling that you know people don't want to be scammed as well because it's adding money and then so you you find that people are looking for um, um they want to, to to they want validation really and before they start and um, and it's 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 difficult because in this day and age and um i think instagram has actually made it easier for us because um i, I remember um stories of um, suicide of, you know, teenagers that joined that maybe because someone is not following or someone, you know, some issues and then it's causing quite a bit of um, uh, problems. So they've actually removed some of those um, controls. So if you, if um, five people like it, or even if it's a thousand people that like your post or even 2000 people, you can decide to make the numbers invisible by saying, you know, okay. so you just show like, like this and others. So there is no pressure. There was that pressure that you know you always wanted to um, to have reached a number before you start. So you start following people. Yeah, there is um, there's a path to getting people to follow you by you know commenting, going on pages, engaging, engagement, and all of that. You know um, there is the, it makes people want to oh, check you out. Actually, when you're saying things that are people like oh I want to know who this person is and they follow you back. You know so there is all of that, but it doesn't stop you from actually going ahead to do whatever you want to do. I, um, for me, I felt I, I, when we did even the fair, I don't think we had up to 1000 followers, but you know, um, sometimes you need just like five, 10, five or 10 percent to believe in what you are doing or to just, Absolutely. you know, you don't need everybody. And you find out that even people that have 1 million followers, is it 1 million people that actually like their post? You find out that maybe it's liked by maybe 10 percent or 5 percent of that population. So where are the rest? So really, it's not really about, it's about what you really want to do if you're set on it. And I, I would say that um, 
um, consistency. I have not been consistent. And I, I'm very open about that, that I actually took a break in and out. And for me, family comes first. Um, uh, my mental health comes first above every other thing. So if I need, I, if I feel I need to go off, I will. Because you know, whatever happens, if when whatever happens to you, or if you don't do what you need to do, then the story goes out, and then you get sympathy when you could have avoided the situation. So for me, I I I I believe, I believe that you need to be consistent. You need to go out there. Um, I know that it's not the same energy I'm using now when I started. You know, like you know, I was always you know, it's almost it felt like my phone was my second you know or I was, what are you posting what are you doing you know you, to, you know sometimes i will even forget what i'm cooking you know things like that i was always you know the energy to all to start thinking about okay what to do okay what should we do this and that and you know it's not that same energy and but i i believe that um and then the the um social media and all of that it tries on now you know it tries on yeah being present being so so people, you know, I know we'll still get to that conversation of mental health because you can't just sit on, you know, as much as you want to engage and all of that, it's not, it's not healthy, <laughs> you know, and, you know, there's always, there's always a way out of that, you know, there are virtual assistants and all of that doing that for people, but you find out that, you know, the break that you were trying to, um, you were trying to leave the rat race to be more at home with your family and still be able to um, run a business and um, make money, but you, um, in the process, you can actually get back into the digital rat race. <laughs> you know, so Absolutely. you need to be very, you know, so I, I wouldn't lose sight of the fact that it's very important to stay consistent, to stay, um, um, to engage with your community and, you know, to deliver on your promise, but you must also um, give credence to what is important. Yeah, so I would say that anyone that is just starting, just keep on, you know, just keep on. Um, um, Rome was not built in a day, and you don't need so many people to follow you. You know, you just need, and you can also identify people that um, um, the influencers, you know, right now it is being more, um, um, influencers too. They, 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 it's a business, you know, it's not just a business, it's community and business. So you can't expect people to post free for you. You know, sometimes, the honest falls on us that okay you should be able to I, I i do that when i see someone doing something really great i push it you know i push what they're doing I, it's not you know I, I do that but you can also reach out you know if you're what you are genuine and all of that the real people will come if your products and what you're offering is good you know you will see people come to you so i i believe that there is a lot to do just that you, you um encourage me but it also um, validates what i i feel very strongly there are times when i do not have the energy i just do not have the energy to engage i mean there are things that um i still i keep calling you see she's my personal personal bully here <laughs> but she's a fantastic person she's not a bully but she she's in that generation where you should engage she doesn't even engage that much in social media but she says oh we need to do this we need to do that we need to do that and i tell her it's not me it's just not me so i think knowing who you are and transferring that persona because who you are the brand you are the person you are your personality that you are as the owner of a business is what transfers into the brand you know if i posted every day truthfully i would not be able to answer anybody you know because there are times i just switch off I'm like, no, I'm going to play word games today. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. And um, the other point you made, which is extremely important, is to prioritize what matters most. We have to decide what matters most to you. What is most important to you? And once you know what is most important, if that comes up first, then we have to pay attention to it. I mean, I'll give you a personal example about... Um, almost um about almost a year and a half ago my husband fell ill and there was actually nothing else i could do at that point in time i had to focus because family was paramount to me you know so i had to focus on him which means i couldn't come here and be sitting i couldn't even think 
uh, yesterday I was la my daughter was laughing at me because I brought out one dress and she said, Mom, you haven't brought out this dress in a long time. This was what you were wearing almost every day going to hospital. <laughs> I'm like, that's true. My, I didn't have the bandwidth to change, to do this, to do that, you know. And I think we, we need to be gentler on ourselves because the mental health issues, it's not until we are weary, removing our clothes and walking on the streets that is mental health issue. No, these issues are real. They're live and then um, they, they, they can really prevent you from moving forward. Just as being addicted to likes can prevent you from being who you, you are, you know. Yes, uh, Keza food, cons consistency, as much as possible, please, without killing yourself, consistency. So I want to throw a few things at, at you, a few words and see, a few words and concepts. I know you're creative at heart, so just tell us what you think about those things in, in one-liners. Boom. Is that? Home. What Home. does it mean to you? Okay. Home. Right. Uh, for me, home is where the art is. Okay. Um, so um, you can choose to make anywhere your own. And um, more importantly, I've come to realize that um, without trying to get into politics, um, is Nigeria is our own. We have so, so, so many differences. And one of the reasons why we have not achieved what we should achieve as a country is that we have not adopted this country as home, as all of us as one. We 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 still we are still divided by you know ethnic lines, and um, Nigeria is still very much a, a a state a country. So um, I find that I I believe that. Um, Ordinarily, if I if I could if I wanted to act like a like a Nigerian or I wouldn't be on the attack of the month, I probably would want to do something in another place, like something that is more you more more I can identify more with. And what I I it's one thing that you know especially when you 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 leave you leave um, you've, you've gone outside the country and you realize that, look, you're a black man, you're a black man, you know, you, 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 you appreciate your country more than, look, all these things that people have struck, they, we have it in our country, it's just that we are under bad management, you know, or you know, our people, we, we, it's both, let me just say that, I would say that, I would say that, I would say that, um, our leadership is a reflection of us. I would True. say that. True. As a people. So we, we 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 put them there. So we are we we are us. We are all of us. We are together in this. You know, it's very easy to point fingers. But I would say that we uh, home is wherever you adapt. If tomorrow I'm in another country, that should be home for me. If I have made up my mind, and I should embrace the people. You know, so home should be where the heart is. Your heart, where your heart is. You know, I may not uh, uh, be with um, where anywhere I want to be, or maybe I aspire to be. In another country but right now this is home and it's always be home especially where you were born bred and where where you identified where your history and your origin is from that is home so and then you you embrace everything that comes with it you know honestly if we could um, align our diversity and all of that we would, we would be oh, as well <laughs> I, I, right, so, I, I, so I, feel I don't you. want to say too much <laughs> I feel you, but I also feel that um, you've touched on something which I, I, not that I didn't want to touch, but I believe that we women kind of shy away from politics, but you know, all politics is local, whether you like it or not, you will be affected by the politics, whether you like it or not. And then, um, yeah, I like what you said, we need to adapt, we need to embrace the people and everything that comes with it. And this is our home, wherever we go, I will always um, identify as a Nigerian first. They will just say Nigerian American. This, you know, they, well, they, they'll put where you come from first. They will. They will. Okay. Um, 
wholeness is another concept I'd like you to just talk about briefly. What is wholeness to you? Hmm. Well, just as it sounds, um, it's um, completeness, but um, I would say that as it pertains, pertains to, to us as humans, I believe that um, we need to, um, we, our wholeness is quite important to us all. Being, but it's, I don't know, do I call it a concept? <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's something that we, we need to embrace. We need to embrace it. But um, it looks like the journey to it is a difficult journey. Because um, we... Um, okay. Um, we... we um, society dictates. And um, a lot of things are competing. For attention and dictating how we should live, how we should do things. But above all, um, I think it is very important that we fight for our wellness. We fight for our well-being. Let me just let us say well-being. Um, I, I, let me let me just that word is still not <laughs> not broken there. But um, our well-being, uh, 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 who we are really. Um, and um, at the core of our being, like, you know, and being able to, um, you said something about me being a creative. I found out that um, um, there are some things that can be very, um, maybe people do it and it works or it does all of that. But for me to do it, I really need to wait. I need to wait. I need to ask myself the, the large sphere of things in the, the you no, know, no. The spell of things, I mean, um, how does this add to me? How does this make me, you know, is this, um, um, am I doing this? Or is this a, um, is this for my own um, uh, benefit? Or is it, it's not just even really about benefit, but does it, does it add value? That's what I wanted to say. Does it add value to me? Okay. Does it, you know, living your life in full also is part of, that concept, like living your life, living it out loud. So, but living yes. it out loud could mean that you know it doesn't mean that you are you, you follow pop, pop, um, uh, popular opinion. It doesn't mean that you're doing you know. And then you know, right now you know, uh, and it don't sound old school, but that's just what it is. That's why I feel about it. That you know, there is a, uh, a, a pressure that you 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 um, you want to do what. Is the in thing, but at the end of the day, does it make you um, feel? Do you, you know, you know, you, you can, you know, it's. I, I'm not judging anybody, and you know, we're all different. But I, I believe that I, I, you know, I need to live my life, so not in the glare of the public or not in the glare of acceptance or valid validation. I can, I can live a full life that I enjoy. You know, and above all, I, I believe that um, because we've seen over the over time that, you know, you see a lot of um, uh, people, you know, you, what you think you're saying is not actually what appearance is actually not reality. You know, all of this is just it created, um, just created for, for show. So, yeah. So I rather not leave you know a life for sure but i rather live full and complete within me I, I can feel gaps in me that i want to do this i've not done it this is my to-do list this is i need to do this i need to do that i can feel that um pressure from within myself that i need to do this but it's it's me putting pressure on myself not anyone putting pressure on me you know so um um i believe in uh, in fullness living life in full you know, people you love, family, you know, making sure that um, you are in touch with family, friends, the people that make you, people that, um, um, that because of them, you are where you are, or, you know, and they have contributed immensely. So I believe in family, I believe in um, love, you know, in love, in, in um, and then also reaching out above all, because that is, you can't really live full and live whole if you have not touched humanity. 
if you have not um, given back, if you know you have not seen the next person beside you that you know that person. I don't know, but you know, and most of these things they don't need they don't need um, to be publicized. You can do it within yourself, and it makes you. You, it's not just what it does to you, but you know, it's it's what it does to other people that you you have this humanity in you, you know, to to feel the pulse of what is happening in other people's lives. So it's it's a it, there's a whole lot that you can pick from oneness in yourself, oneness in uh, in fact that you uh, I mean you are living your life to the fullest. You are you are um, doing. Um, what God's work on the earth, you know, you are, you, 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 um, I saw my friend sent me, she's on this slide, and she sent me something and saying that um, yesterday on my DM that said, um, um, you, how did she put that? I think it says um, something like, um, Lord, let my glory, let your glory show through what I do. That so, you know, so that, you know, at the end of the day, it's towards the glory of God, and that is. Our life is not, we're not here, we're not in an island. We didn't just appear here. There's a root. We came through roots. And then also, we, you know, if you're a Christian, you know that we have a mandate on the earth. So all of this all intertwines. So, yeah. As as I say, all join. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you're, you're so right. And um, as you're talking, I got this image of a patchwork quilt, a quilt made of different fabrics. And we have those different fabrics, you know. Um, if I'm wearing a jersey material, I can't be cotton at the same time. I can't be satin, I can't be silk. All these things have their purposes. And even the colors, we are also multiple. We are, we are, we are multicolored. Even one person can be different colors, depending on, mm. like I said to people, it depends on the time of the day. I, I can be different colors at the same time, you know. But um, you, you talked about live, live your life in full, live your life out loud, be organic, and also speak to the gaps and spaces that are within you, that you have the power to to fill. Know what you, I can I can do what you're doing, but can I piggyback off you? Very possible. And you can piggyback off me, very possibly. So that's where the collaboration comes, you know. Hey, hi, Juliet, Chef Jules, you know. Yes, and hi, everybody. And thank you so much. I mean, I mean, Portacon Mom really brought, she brought the rain. She brought the rain this time, I tell you. She really brought the rain. Thank you for, for, for clearing that up for many of us, because um, I tell you, sometimes it might be only my generation Hi, Diana, I just saw you. Hi, you know, it might be just my generation, it might be your generation, but that fear of missing out, the fear that you're looking at other people. I mean, when I was growing up, I didn't have that because I didn't know what other people were doing. We didn't have this, we didn't have this thing. We didn't have this thing. So we, we didn't know, people are doing other things, fine for them, you know? So we, we will all know when we get, um, in fact, even what I was, it, it wasn't an issue. But I think the issues in this generation are issues that need to be at least, if not addressed fully, because we can't in one hour, but at least talked about and let people be at rest that it's okay to be who you are. It's really okay to be who you are. So um, we are almost out of time. Actually, we are out of time now. So I wanted to shout out First of all, to the person who gave me this T-shirt, my friend Demola Sam Adeoye, DSA, he gave me this fabulous Potaco tea. Uh, DSA, if you're listening, or if, if you're listening now, or if you listen later, I want another color too, please. It's a fabulous Potaco T-shirt. And then I want to shout out to other Potaco brands, women in Potaco, Veronica's daughter, Potaco Waka Waka, Potaco Thrifts, Potaco in, in Pictures, we will be shouting out throughout, throughout this um, month, you know, and um, we see you, we hail you, we love you, and we thank you for all you do for Otakos and for Nigeria. We thank you. We thank you. We have a, a comment here. Let me see. Um, 
okay, this generation, she says she likes the emphasis on, on family in this. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm coming to you, Jules. I like the emphasis on family in this discussion. Women always, often have that conflicting feeling, oh, sorry, I don't know, of what to do with themselves once they begin to nurture their family or build their home. Family first, yeah, yeah. There's, there are times and seasons, and we must agree that, um, accept that um, we brought these children to the world. We are building our homes first. And when that time is passed, there'll be time for, for other things to happen. So thank you very much for that comment. And Juliet asks, can Lagos women join Portacot women? <laughs> we are all women, so we can join. I mean, listen, I didn't even know that you were you were part of uh, the the people who set up uh, for um, well part of the corona trial because i attended that school and my sister who is on this platform also Ooh, attended okay. corona oh yeah i attended corona victoria island and um, she attended corona Ikoi, and i had no idea that that was the background so yeah it's phenomenal what women can do so please can you tell us in wrapping up um what um let me see, I had, I had it all sorted out. Three tips that you've been giving us tips, or three tips you can share with people who are trying to build their communities. Okay. Um, first of all, I'm no expert. <laughs> I, I, I just, um, I'm just a woman building a brand. Um, but I would say that um, I think most of the things, I, if anything I want to share, I must have shared it in the conversation. Um, if you want to build a community, you must first um, um, identify with that community. Um, you can actually even build, I've seen a lot of communities that are online that they don't even have a, a geographic um, um, space whereby they just it's just a community, you know, it's just women opening a page and other women commenting and engaging because they share um, they share on things that touch on their own very core too, and also their their um, as a women they can identify with them as women. So I, I believe that also identifying what you want to do and then also um, um, going the extra mile. Uh, for me, I would say that uh, in the beginning I went to places. You know, I didn't even know where how to get there. You know, and uh, I remember. Um, this, she now runs an exotic fruit, um, Ogechi or Vineyard, um, Vineyard Shopping Center. Um, she, 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 um, I don't know, she mes messaged me about something and then I don't, she, I, I later found out what she was doing and then I just sent a mail that look, um, then I was, that was when I was already thinking that, okay, could we do a, um, a fair and, you know, could we use their, their, their vicinity and all of that. And then we started talking and, you know, I was going there almost every other week and, you know, she was so, you know, welcoming and, you know, introduced me to the uh, owner of the, um, one of the visits and all of that. So you find out that it's not really hard. I've, you know, there are a lot of people that I have sent messages to, emailed, you know, um, Miss Josephine of, um, of Mr. Josephine of um, Quantum Business School, that they, they actually, when they see what you, you want to do, you know, Miss, uh, Mrs. Favor of um, um, Wisdom, um, church, you know, you um, you know, you find out that I mean, this favor or Syria, I mean, you know, connected with, with a whole lot of them, and you know, and I even um, Ma yourself, you know, because I remember Wimbies, I I attended my very first Wimbies um, when I was working in Ekoi in Lagos, and that day I didn't even get a time off. I just, you know, I registered, and that was around 2008. I just, you know, I think I got on a bike. From Ikoi to be, I attended. I didn't even stay to the end, but I saw women fill the room. It was like, wow, you know, from banking and all of that. There was no seat when I got there, and I didn't plan to stay long. I just wanted to see, you know, what was happening. And I know that you are from, you know, you're part of Wimbase, and you know, you're a big part of it. And I've seen women, you know, so even when Wimbase came to Port Harcourt, and that was around 2018, you know, to do, you know, I had to, you know, I had to register to attend. You know, so I think also being part of what women are doing, because I've seen Wimbis Wimbis for a long time. I've known Wimbis to exist for women for a long time. So when they were coming to Port Harcourt, and that was just around the time we wanted to the event, I I attended the event. It was a two-day event. You were a speaker, you know. Then I, you know, I read your profile, and I was like, oh wow, 
this woman, oh, she's ready there. Yeah. So I was actually following, you know, so you should also identify the women that, you know, that are doing great and have gone ahead of you that you could actually learn from. You know, it's not uh, until you have a one-on-one -on -one mentoring, but you can, from a distance, learn what they are doing. We, we can say that we are digital, but they are also, you know, I see a lot of, uh, you know, we are doing so much and uh, I think even, you know, I, I see a lot, I can say, okay, yes, you people helping out, but, you know, you have to desire it. I see a lot of women in your age group that you probably shy away from it and say, you know, now it's for a particular generation and all of that. But now it's it's not, it's not, there's no barrier in age, there's no barrier, you know, young, old and all of that. So connecting with the women that are, that are actually making a difference, connecting with them, attending their programs, the events, you know, and all of that, you know, and connecting. And then also, um, um, the last thing I would say, I think I've mentioned to um, the last thing I would say is that um, be true to yourself, you know, know the reason why you want to do what you're doing. Um, um, don't do it for, because um, every at every point in time, you need to redefine what you're doing anyway, to redefine, yeah. is it working? Am I still, you know, in line with the reason? Is there a need for strategies, a change in strategies? Is there a need for change? Because things around you can redetect how you go. So. So there is there is need for that. So um, you need to evaluate and check that you're doing it for the right reasons. And if the reasons have changed, then you need to rebrand and you know change um, what you're doing. Being true to the calling and it's yourself in, in the process. So yeah. Thank you so much, Beatrice. Thank you. I have enjoyed this immensely, and I tell you, um, if I call you again, please please show i know we, we know ourselves we, we are we are flying under radar you know <laughs> we are flying under the radar but um yeah. just to encourage other women just to help people especially women who are building their brands from scratch and um, to support them this is the main reason that i i do this and this is the main reason we started jjc and um the more we can do them better for all of us thank you so much beatrice and thank you everybody on um, instagram thank you for following the conversation and to everybody on facebook until next week when we come up with another person we'll see you beatrice thank you My pleasure, man. I, shall be, I shall be calling you i shall be calling <laughs> you <laughs> thank you my pleasure is all mine all right. Bye, everyone. Until next week, Thursday. See you. Thank you.